Guys, welcome to the videos on how to teach this for AQR. This is the first of our estimating large numbers. There's going to be three videos we talk about. The first one is going to be crowd size estimation. The lesson has you take a 5x5 five five square, either in your room, out in the hallway, and has you fill that square up with the students in your classroom to try to come up with your own ratio. So you start putting these students in here, and let's say we end up with 15 kids that fit inside of this 5x5. Five five. Well, 5x5 five five is 25 square feet, and it allows 15 people to fit into that square comfortably. And you want to preface this as this is a square that is at a venue, maybe a concert or something that they're watching, so they want to be able to fit comfortably in here. You don't want to pack them in there like sardines and then and then just deal with that ratio because it's not going to be very comfortable. They're going to be standing. There's no space around them to move around or, or anything. So you want to stress that you want to be comfortable as if they're at a concert watching something with standing room only. Also, you, you want to put the, uh, the area here first divided by the number of people because this is going to provide a little bit of continuity for the using ratios video that's going to happen in, in a, few, uh, a few sections of this unit. But here we first get our ratio, then we want to simplify it as something to 1. Well, 25 divided by 15 is 1.6 repeating, so 1.67 to 1 is going to be our ratio when we simplify it down to 1. Then we're going to want to use that ratio. We have several little problems. The major problem in this unit or this section here of this unit is that we have a parade route that goes for a mile down the street and then on either side of the street people can stand 10 feet from the edge of the street. So we want to use the ratio we just got or maybe we want to use one that the book or the worksheet assigns to this problem. And so some of the pitfalls that we're going to have here, first the students may not know how many feet are in a mile, so we got to have unit conversions. Also, they may forget to multiply by 2 whenever they take 5,280 feet times 10. They may only see 10 and not use that word both to understand they got to multiply by 2. So pitfalls are multiplying by 2 and then unit conversions. Also here, if you notice, I drew the mile, the street, not straight. And I think part of me draws this not straight because it's very difficult to find a perfectly straight section of street. Most streets have some curve to them, so this is kind of a model of what a real world street might look like. And I want to emphasize that it doesn't matter the area of this curved section, so if we draw this thing is curved all the way around it, whenever we're estimating, this here is going to give us extremely close estimation to where is if we use calculus or some kind of higher level mathematics to actually calculate the area of this. So it doesn't matter if it's a straight street or if it's a curved street, we're still using the one mile in linear distance and the 10 feet in linear distance off of that street. So we'll find the area of this section and this section, this section, multiply it by our ratio, and then come up with a crowd size, an estimation for crowd size for this type of problem. The next thing that we're going to want to do is this is only one method, finding the number of people that fit inside of a certain area. This is only one method. And this class is called advanced quantitative reasoning. So we're trying to reason through our quantitative measures, through our processes. And so finding new methods to solve the same problem is essentially what this class is all about. So the major thing when we're trying to find new methods is making sure that our logic or our reasoning is sound and that there's no major holes. There may be little holes, holes we don't anticipate or, or that cause any kind of relevance because it's just estimation. But we want to make sure that the thought process makes sense throughout the entire problem or the entire method of how to solve that problem. So when we find new methods, for example, if we take the number of cars in a parking lot, well, if you see this gigantic parking lot filled with cars, you probably know there's a large crowd. And we might need to estimate it for advertising purposes, for any reason, maybe just because the worksheet says we need to do it. 
but cars in the parking lot. So what we need to do is come up with a reasonable way to incorporate cars in a parking lot and some kind of operation that makes sense other, with other information. So you can't take cars in the parking lot and then multiply it by the number of tickets sold or the average number of people that go into one gate at, the, at Six Flags, for instance. You have to have something that makes sense with what the car has to do with people. And so cars in the parking lot, another way that you can estimate crowd size is multiply the number of cars by the average number of people per car. And what that will do is that will give you an estimation based on the cars and based on the people that had to ride in those cars. That will give you a good crowd size estimation. Also, people walking past a fixed point. You can have a timer on a fixed point and see how many people pass inside of one minute. Well, you have to have something to go with that in order to make it reasonable. That being the number of people that pass in one minute multiplied by the number of minutes it takes for everybody to walk past that point. So logical reasoning, you'll see in several of these scenarios where some students will give you a piece of information that's illogical, that makes no sense. And this is the perfect time in this course, especially in this unit, to identify the, the process, the thought process that goes into into the logic or the reasoning of how they try to solve problems, especially if it's a little unconventional to how maybe you would solve it.